I am happy to be the host of the, the uh, cable show, and uh, I'm glad to have with us our first guest, uh, as always, a chamber member. And uh, today, our first guest is uh, the founder and CEO of the Pediatric Oncology Treasure Chest Foundation, uh, Colleen Kissel. And along with Colleen is uh, her son, Martin Kissel, who is the administrative support for the Treasure Chest Foundation. Welcome to our show. Oh, thank you thank for you. having us. And, and you know, I, I, we've spoken a little bit about the Treasure Chest in the past, um, and I know this is some information. I mean, it's just a, such a worthwhile uh, cause and organization. Um, let's get to what the Treasure Chest is all about. So, Colleen, can you tell our listeners what the Treasure Chest Foundation is? Yes, thank you. Well, 22 years ago, my son, Martin, at, was seven years old at the time, was diagnosed with leukemia. And he was about to embark in a four-year treatment program, and it was brutal. It consisted of spinal taps and bone marrow aspirations, nothing a kid should um, endure. And um, he wasn't even uh, knocked out. They used to use a numbing cream. And I mean, these kids were terrified to go to the treatment center to, to undergo the treatment that would save their lives. Oh, yeah. And yes, for again, four years. And um, mm. he never received a sticker or a sucker uh, during that four year treatment uh, again. So um, when I would say a month or two into the program, he announced he wasn't uh, going to the hospital. You know, he just, oh, it was so difficult and so hard and scary. Everything about it was bad. And um, I devised a plan of bribery to get my son out of the, ho out of the house. And I would um, buy a trunk full of toys and awesome big toys and I'd wrap them up and then I'd bribe him at home to uh, go through this um, horrible, Oh, treatment. So we are talking about Martin. Yes. And he is bribable then. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. And he was bribable because he suddenly didn't mind going to the hospital all because right. he knew that a big toy would be awaiting him mm -hmm. after a spinal tap, a bone marrow aspiration, chemotherapy. Oh, it was terrible. But anyway, it worked. And um, fast forward the tape. Uh, after his treatment was completed, and he was or is one of the winners, we were very blessed. Um, I imagined a program of, for, of bribery for the kids at the hospital that my son was being treated at, which was called uh, Christ Community Hospital at the time, and uh, today it's Hope Hospital. But um, today, okay, so I, uh, I, I formulated this plan of bribery that, and I introduced it to Christ Hospital, and um, the community really got behind the idea. Mm -hmm. And today, we serve 9,300 kids every month in the nation in 49 children's cancer treatment centers. That's so, remarkable. Yes, thank you. I, I just thought this was a local organization. Oh, no, no. Uh, well, I, I just didn't recall that you told me it was national, so. Yes. And, and that's, that's, Martin, you had a, a, a big start with this organization. Yeah. So you're continuing with your support. Yeah, I mean, I was there, I, you know, I guess the inspiration for mm -hmm. it, and I, it worked wonderful on me, and I see now how great it works for everyone else, it's amazing. That's right, and you also know which toys are the best toys to bribe with. Oh yeah. All right. Do do they do that uh, at all? You provide them with toys, and uh, so now you've told us what the inspiration was. Yes. Now let's talk about some of the different facets of uh, the foundation. Yes. Well, um, when you said, "Do they do that with toys?" The only toy that leaves our facility is a high-end, expensive toy. So it is not, we're not bribing anybody, and we use the word bribe, we're not right. holding up a box of crayons. However, if a box of crayons comes in, our wonderful volunteers create gift bags full of uh, coloring books, crayons, smaller toys. I mean, the gift bag will have about at least six or seven items in it, but we want to be about high-end expensive toys. Well, tell me, how, how do you mean that? Well, our community, our wonderful community supports the nation. Mm -hmm. We don't have any anybody in our nation helping us but our community. We want to run a toy distribution operation. And actually, I was I thought Martin could possibly explain the uh, process at the warehouse. All right. Well, 
I guess that's your the segue that's, to Martin to okay. explain how the program works. Well, how it works is all the toys come to our facility that is in Orland Park, mm -hmm. and from there they are processed, which means we get a label on every single toy to let the parents or the grandparents know where it's coming from. And then from there on out, we have a general idea or, or an exact idea of how many kids are being served at each hospital. So we know exactly how many toys to pack into each box. Then the toys are dis dis distributed um, via UPS to each hospital. When they get to the hospital, there are two levels of the organization. One is the cabinet, which houses the larger toys, which are for the big procedures, the spinal taps and bone marrow. So when you get that, you know, the big painful procedures, you get to go to the cabinet, that's where all the really big toys are. Mm -hmm. Then we also have actual treasure chests at the hospital, which have smaller but still wonderful toys because, you know, when you're not getting the spinal taps, you're getting blood taken from you, you're getting medicine, you know, any kind of little sure. treatment that just builds up. So the little toys add up really quick, and then you get to take that one big toy home when you get the big procedures. It, it Maybe it doesn't alleviate the pain during the process, but maybe afterwards it may take away some of the memory of that pain because now they're thinking about uh, some of the, here's a treasure chest right here, right? Yes, and our treasure chest, Joe, is the size of a hope chest. This is not a little tiny box you might see in a medical facility. This is the size of a hope chest. And every single time a little one walks in the door, again, kind of repeating what Martin said, if it's a simple blood test, you're still going to the treasure box. If it's the big guns, the high-end items are kind of high, uh, stored in the cabinet. Now, Colleen, and I should tell you, we have maybe about a minute left. So, And there's, I think, a lot more that you wanted to say. So. Let's see if we can cram a lot of information to that last minute. Well, okay. Martin, did you want to say something about the uh, operation of the facility? Just, just you know, continue and say what, you, what needs to be said in this last minute. As a closing, as a closing message. Okay. We, we are supported with toys, Joe. Okay. We don't need toys. Our toys come in in droves. The Treasure Chest Foundation is always looking for funding. All right. We don't have any contracts with anybody or, you know, so our, the only way we can keep our ship afloat is, you know, tapping into the hearts of someone who experienced cancer treatment. Like, uh, you know, everybody knows somebody who's gone through cancer treatment. Okay, so we don't run out of time. Why don't you give us a phone number, uh, email, a website, uh, so people can, can find out more about you and know how to contact you? Well, our website is easy. It's treasurechest, one word, dot org. Okay. And our phone number is 708-687-TOYS, T-O-Y-S. I think that's easy enough. Yes. So, and we're located down the street in Orland Park. And okay. Well, Colleen and, and Martin, thank you both for being thank you. here. And uh, you got that information. Uh, if you need to contact uh, Colleen or Martin or any of our other guests, you can reach them or the other guests through the Chamber Office, 708-532-5700, or go to our website, uh, tinleychamber.org. Our next guests, actually we have two guests, uh, we have the co-owners of Trader Magazine, Harold Hewitt and Joe Farnetti. Welcome to our show, fellas. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having we're us. We're glad that we're having you here. Uh, uh, you're, you here. have a very popular and colorful publication. Thank you. Um, and rather than me rambling on about it, um, I mean, I'm sure the accolades are welcome, <coughs> but um, why don't the two of you just tell us a little bit about yourselves and what inspired you to go into this business and maybe become partners? Sure. Well, Joe and I have an um, extensive advertising background. And um, we just wanted to kind of do something, uh, something different than, than our competitors. And uh, we want to do something on a local level, so that's why we started doing the, the magazine. It's, you know, pretty much takes care of all local businesses. That's our main bread and butter for the, if you will, for the, all right. the print. Now that's, that's, well, your inspiration. You said that you have a, a, an advertising background. Correct. Um, yes. I don't know if you want to elaborate on that at all, or if, if Joe wants yeah. to say anything about what inspired him to go into the business? And sure. Um, I've, I've 
was in Yellow Pages for most of my career, but also I've I've been I've sold billboards and okay. um, newspaper. Uh, Harold was a, a, a one of the top reps of uh, one of the local Yellow Pages, <laughs> and um, when we decided to do this, I I said. Harold, you're the you're the man. Oh, we, yeah, have to, right. we have yeah. to look into Mac this. And no, no wonder he didn't want to elaborate. Yeah, yeah. No, come no, across no. as bragging white, or whatever. Right. But coming from Mac his white. partner, that's a good thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you went from yellow pages to like really colorful pages. That's a Correct. big difference. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, well, my compliments. Thank you. Um, all right. So tell us the different aspects or the different facets of of your Trader Magazine. Well, we um, we set ourselves. Um, uh, from our competitors by being, like I said, all pretty much all local advertisers. Okay. So we're dealing with a lot of the mom and pops. Um, you you won't see any 800 numbers in our magazine. Um, we we mail out um, every six weeks roughly about 210,000 copies to um, 21 towns, which cover about 25 zip codes total zip codes. So. Okay. Um, all right, well, why don't we name some of those uh, mastheads, right, I guess we would call it. Uh, well, um, uh, what Harold just uh, explains is encompassed in about seven or seven different directories, seven different magazines. Okay. We have the Lincoln Way, uh, Tinley Park, <clears throat> Orland Park, Palis, Lockport, Homer Glen, Lamont. Uh, we go as far as Plainfield and then the Joliet area. All right. So. As far as Plainfield? Yeah, those are two new areas for are us, they? Joliet yes. and Plainfield, right? Okay, yep. that's that's yep. a that's yep. a big area. Yep. And really, yep. the focus is just that in each town we wanna we wanna be the guys that you know the local businesses, the community organizations, like the one that was on earlier, can come to us and say, hey, we we want you to help us get our you know our name out, the word out, and we want it. That's what we want to do. So. We also put community events, um, not for profit type events. Um, you know, we work with all the chambers. We're in, I think, seven chambers right now. So we work with all of them, including Tinley. We do quite a bit with mm -hmm. um, stuff that's going to keep the community looking at the magazine, but also benefiting these these charities or, or sure. you know, community events. You know, it's going to help everybody. So, all right. So we know it's a magazine. Mm -hmm. It's full color. Correct. Uh, many pages, and and you know, I I do look at the magazine uh, whenever it's delivered to. Uh, my office, um, but besides the magazine, or are there different aspects of the magazine that you want to uh, talk about? Um, not, I mean, we have full pages, half pages, quarter okay. pages, right. sixth of a page. I would I mean, say you know. one thing I'd like to, to throw out there is one of the big things we do is a cover contest where you know any kind of community event or if, uh, a grandmother can send a picture of their their grandkid in, and and every issue we get inundated with pictures through our website and we um, pick one and put it on the cover on each different zone and that gives us a real another another I know I keep saying it but the local feel of our magazine sure you and know. boy and you've point. got a lot of grandmas that love you yeah or, exactly. or, or maybe <laughs> right. not because their picture didn't get right it, but still they had <laughs> yeah. an opportunity correct uh, exactly I think they understand not everybody can be on there um, all right so there's the printed magazine what other facet of <laughs> Trader Magazine or your organization can can businesses take advantage of? Well, we do anything that is considered direct mail. Um, we do postcards, like I, I brought a couple mm -hmm. samples here. We do um, postcards that, um, you know, any business that prefers to do something like this for special events or what have you. Um, we do flyers, we do brochures, we do menus for restaurants. Okay. Um, not a huge part of our business right now, but it is growing the more and more that um, people are recognizing us. So. Which, what was your first uh, magazine? Uh, it would have been the Lincoln Way edition. Lincoln Way, okay. Which, yeah, and then you just, that was like the hub and you just correct. expanded yep, from exactly. there. Correct, exactly. Yeah. Okay, yep. Yep. and I, you may have said it, and I'm sorry if, if it didn't register. How long have you been in existence now? Will be um, six years, November first. Six years, mm -hmm. and you're in all those communities. Correct. That's yeah. some good yeah. growth. And hopefully, we'll be in two more publications you must be doing something by right the end then. of this year. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> two more at by the end of the year. Hopefully, yes. Okay. Yep. All right. How many uh, employees do you have? Um, we have um, eight salespeople. Okay. Then Joe and myself, um, and we have uh, two full-time designers on staff. So all your ads are created locally. Mm -hmm. And quick turnaround time, usually within 24 hours, we could provide that. 
Um, then we have an office manager as well. So. Okay. All right. So we've covered your the, the, your areas. The the well, we know the benefits of the magazine. I do recognize mm -hmm. a couple of people here that are active right. in the chamber <laughs> right. of commerce. One of the typical questions that I ask is, who are your ideal customers? Well. I don't know. I mean, it's just about anybody that wants to get exposure, right? Right. Well, I um, think Joe could probably elaborate. Yeah. On that well, a I mean, I think you said it. I mean, we're, you know, our goal <laughs> is to help businesses. I mean, it's the simplest way for me to say it. <clears throat> of course, we want to be successful, but um, you know, really, we look at, you know, we have these in-house designers. You asked us about other other things we do. You know, we're not opposed to helping a business develop a logo. Um, or some an ad campaign, or they need help with you know a sign that they want to put you know use for the chamber events or for an expo. Mm -hmm. um, you know we're very um, you know very dedicated to helping our customers grow their business. Okay, yep. so there's added benefits being one of your clients. Yes, I right. think so. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so. Um, as far as, now you mentioned businesses a lot, and then you, you'll also help promote different organizations if mm -hmm. they have some type of a promotion, and that's kind of your community involvement. Correct. But they also can advertise if they want. Yes, yep. Not just commercial businesses. Right, oh, okay. absolutely. Well, do you have a promotion, you know, in during the month of May or June, or anything that you, you want to talk about? We have standard promotions running um, pretty much throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's more on a, it, it's hard to just give one promotion because sure. we, you know, it all depends on, you know, length of uh, your advertising run and things like that and how many directories you're going to go into. Um, you're going to do one, you're going to do two or three or five or something like that. Okay. So, all right. So but, there's kind of standard, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, what we, what would we call those? Not uh, promotions necessarily, but spiffs or something. Right. Uh, for longevity and, Correct. and as yes. you say, the mm -hmm. number of publications. Right. And they vary a little bit, so. Well, we have about 30 seconds left and uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity as a, just a parting message to our viewers. Okay. All right, Joe, let's go throw that <laughs> one like out there. he throws that at me. <laughs> um, well, I think, uh, should I, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I, I guess uh, um, the parting message that I would say is um, if, you're, if you're a small business, a new business, a, or a large business, and an established business, we can help you accomplish your goals. And that's what we're trying to do. So give us a call and we'll do everything we can to help you. That was a good parting message. Thank Harold you. and Joe, thank you for being with us. Thank you. And continued uh, success with Great. yours. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. All right. Appreciate thank it. you. Our next guest is a, a very new chamber member. We have with us Dr. Joe Brannigan with uh, Brannigan Chiropractic Center. Yes, sir. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Dr. Joe, it's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you and, for having and me. And chiropractic is near and dear to uh, to my heart and and back, I should say. Um, <laughs> but, you know, what? why don't you tell us what your what inspired you? What, what, what motivated you to go into this profession? Tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. I was a young man that had uh, parents... Uh, my father specifically and uncles that had uh, very blue collar and laborious jobs. Mm -hmm. And as they were in their 30s and 40s, they were starting to have a lot of back injuries and problems. And I said, uh, there's got to be a better way than, than just drugs and surgery for these issues. And so uh, my dad had a lot of muscle and fitness magazines laying around. He was mm -hmm. an avid uh, workout fiend. And uh, in one of the articles or in one of the, the magazines, the... Um, editor, one of the editors was a chiropractor, and so he had put some information about getting to the root of the problems, especially with the back, but a lot of other uh, health conditions. And from there on out, I said, oh, this is something I need to try. I need to look into this. Sure. All right. Well, we're going to get into the various health problems, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was your inspiration for going into this profession. But tell us a little bit about you now. Oh, sure. So, um, I practice over in, in uh, Orland Park mm -hmm. right now, and uh, I've been there for, I've been in Orland Park for eight years, but I've been in practice for now 13 years, and we're celebrating that um, this month, and uh, having some joint ventures with some of the chambers, as I, as I know okay. you're uh, influenced by. Sure. And uh, I studied my undergraduate uh, career over at the University of Chicago, where I did some neuroscience research, and uh, from there went to the chiropractic school, 
and obviously chiropractors are studying the human condition and, sure. and namely the uh, the back and spine but any joint in the body and in Illinois we're actually licensed physicians so that we're general physicians to begin with mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that I'm uh, uh, looking to uh, cure heart disease and all these kinds of things, but if there's anything that I can do to slow the process down, that's absolutely what I'm interested Certainly. in. Certainly, and, and I know there are various modes mm -hmm. that, that help you accomplish that. Um, <clears throat> but we did talk earlier a little bit more about a personal aspect uh, of Dr. Joe. Were yes, you gonna, sir. Were you going to tell our viewers a little bit I, about that? I sure will. Okay. I am married to my high school sweetheart for the last 17 years, and Joe said to definitely mention that she was fabulously beautiful as well. Uh, we have three children together, and um, we are. Uh, so, my wife actually works with me as well as mm -hmm. uh, uh, six other fabulous, empowered women. And really? uh, together, oh. we've been uh, very successful and, and made it to the, some of the top echelons in chiropractic with their help. So very I'm, good. I'm very, uh, very satisfied and very pleased to be working with all of them. Well, you've kind of like jumped to my uh, number. four for question, how oh, many okay. employees do you have working with sure. you? So mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that, that covers it. Um, so we may as well tell, tell us a little bit, what, what are the different positions that, that they cover and what aspect of healthcare or in the office? Absolutely, so I have uh, three uh, technicians slash secretaries slash do it all young ladies. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are handling anything from front desk and insurance um, to helping me uh, pull acupuncture pins in the back when we have uh, that modality in place. We also do and have um, them helping with rehab so that they uh, help to do some rehabilitation on our patients to help uh, have the patients actually go ahead and um, solidify or stabilize their condition. And then uh, we have a, another woman who does uh, massage therapy in our office, so they help with that and okay. trigger point therapy, that sort of thing. So. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we know chiropractic has many facets. And you mentioned acupuncture, yes. so you're gonna to wanna to talk about that. But what are some of the different modalities? I mean, chiropractic itself is a modality, but uh, the, the other services that are offered through Brannigan uh, Chiropractic Center. Sure, so one of the specializations that we have is to work with uh, very injured patients after a trauma, mm -hmm. um, obviously, um, we also have patients that have old injuries that they don't think that can be helped, but that's something that we also have favorable outcomes. Okay. And uh, patients are, are very satisfied and uh, don't mind uh, putting nice things usually on Yelp and uh, uh, Facebook and that sort of thing about us. But um, from time to time, we'll have uh, attorneys uh, go ahead and refer patients because they don't know what to do with the patient. And uh, on the other hand, chiropractors um, generally aren't looking to prove when someone has a soft tissue injury and that's something that we specialize in so that the patient um, not only is getting helped, which I, I do believe that most chiropractors can help them, but they're not usually looking to um, go ahead and prove the, the problem is there and that's something that, that the cases usually suffer for. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the conditions or, or reasons that people should come to uh, go to a chiropractor. Sure. So the the conditions can be uh, vast and many. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. But I would say the usual suspects are people that have headaches, sciatica, uh, thoracic outlet syndrome, something down the arm and, and leg. Obviously disc conditions. Some people call them slip discs, but that's uh, herniated discs. There's a lot of different names for similar conditions. But any any time that there's a problem with uh, the nervous system, that's something that, that at least a chiropractor should take a shot at. But uh, the interesting part is, is that all of the care is, is manual or by hand, and they're natural remedies, and they're the best solution for a natural remedy for a, a long-term chronic condition that we all will enjoy, mm. unfortunately, throughout our life. Sure, probably the most non-invasive type of treatment. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, sir. Well, who are your... Um, your typical patients then? So the, the typical or the best patient would be uh, one that's motivated to get help, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, it doesn't do anybody good if they have good insurance, but they don't want the help. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work out for them. But we've realized over time that uh, sometimes when the, when the conditions are more serious or they've tried everything else, I tell people those make great patients because then they're, they're ready to listen. 
Uh, but if someone's ready to listen right up front, we're, we're very good with that because mm -hmm. that helps them and, and it, uh, a much better outcome uh, is had because of that. All right. I know there are, now you remember you mentioned acupuncture. Yes, sir. And um, what, what are the uses uh, for that treatment? Uh, that is also a very uh, wide array. So in, in the East, anything from, uh, and what we use it mostly for in our practice is going to be uh, obviously chronic pain or, or stiffness in, in joints and things like that. Uh, but we're also using it for uh, sciatica, some of the same conditions. If you can just reduce the inflammation of the body, the body has a profound effect at getting to some of these roots of the issues. So mm -hmm. we've even seen it uh, help with uh, infertility and some infertility clinics will actually even refer patients for that. And, and uh, actually the, the stats on that uh, from some of that research is that there's a 40% better effect with the infertility treatment if they're having acupuncture alongside it. Really, along with the-, the Infertility, yes. Right, the specific uh, treatment. A lot Very less good. expensive as All well. Right. So it assists the body. Yes. Um, Dr. Joe, we have about 45 seconds left in this segment. So yes, sir. If, there, if there's a parting message that you would like to uh, say to our viewers. Absolutely, that uh, it's never too late to uh, go after some of these joint problems that people have, aches and pains and problems. Uh, I know that chiropractic is something that does get to the root of these issues. And I tell people that after about a two week treatment plan, we can usually assess that we're either gaining traction on it or not, and we'll do an assessment at that point and, and see where you're at. All right, Dr. Joe, thank you for being with us. And I hope you will learn something and found that the chiropractic has many benefits. Again, thanks for being with us and uh, continued uh, good health. My pleasure, thank you, Joe. Well, thank you for being with us uh, for this uh, show. Uh, we will see you next month. For you golfers, contact the Chamber office for the Chamber's Golf Outing, which is a fun thing. And for those of you that like craft beers and fine wines, if you missed last Saturday's Brew and Vine Fest, tune in for next year's. They're fabulous.